Oh, good evening. Good afternoon. Hello, everyone out there in YouTube land. We're having adventures with our technology now. And uh, welcome to Romans part four. This is our penultimate lesson. Don't you love that world? I learned that when I was in a music school. <laughs> anyway, it's my $20 word penultimate. Uh, we're on lesson seven. We're taking up chapter 15. And I'm going to have Yanis open in prayer tonight. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. Father, we thank you and praise you for this time. Father, we thank you for all we've learned this far. Father, and just as uh, Luann said, we're on our penultimate uh, lesson tonight, Father. And we just pray that you would go before us and we would have a good lesson together. Mm -hmm. in name. Amen. 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 Well, so our focus this week was uh, chapter 15, but we need to do a slight review. We're not going to do a big review. You're welcome. <laughs> That's next week. <laughs> and um, so I'm just going to follow along in the leader guide tonight. So we're going to start with what we know about um, chapter 12 of Romans. Of course, we haven't got that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, relationships. Gifts. Gifts. Gifts and relationships. Gifts and relationships. So, so when when we were talking about the segments that we've studied, Romans twelve begins the last segment of the book. The and services. Ah, uh, service. service. Yes. How to serve the Lord and serve each other. Good. Good. Right. Yes. Mm hmm And so uh, what does it start with? An appeal. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Hang on a second here. If you rustle the papers in front of the microphone, that's all people are going to hear. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I got my fancy microphone on tonight. Um, so you just have to take that into account. Um, yeah. So, so uh, going back to the thought about how the righteous serve the Lord and how we serve one another, where does it start? Um, and I wanted to suggest to you that it was um, the word I'm looking for, the idea I'm looking for is the title of that they have put on this uh, Romans part four. When we got our books and we opened them up, we didn't even look at the title. <laughs> 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 well, I'm going to open up mine here. You can't flip the papers around, Bobby. <laughs> Living sacrifice. That's what I'm looking for. Living sacrifice. And so that is. I've got a top on my page if you don't believe that. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So uh, the life of as a life as a living sacrifice, and what about our minds? We have to renew our minds. Mm hmm. Renew and transformed, right? And then you said it's about gifts. To, and what are the gifts for? building up of the body yes good so how does then uh chapter 12 end thinking about how we need to treat the hungry if, if somebody is hungry, the enemy is hungry mm -hmm. feed him. if he's thirsty give him a drink mm -hmm. yeah um, yeah 
if, if possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Yes, yes, mm -hmm. yes. So basically it's saying how all believers should relate to everybody, believers and unbelievers, enemies, all alike, right? How to relate. Okay, so now that moving that into uh, Romans 13, what is the overarching theme there? Submission to authorities. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Subjection, right? Subject, subject to governing authorities and something else. Loving others. Yep. Loving, loving your neighbors. Loving others. Yep. Loving, loving your neighbor. Okay. So then we move into Romans 14. And what were we taught about in Romans 14? Oh, the weak and the strong in faith. Mm. Don't cause another to stumble. Don't cause another to stumble. Mm -hmm. Don't. Mm -hmm. Don't judge. Pass judgment on one another. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, um, all right. All right. So we had those columns. Didn't we have columns? Where's my paper? So here I am. I got lots of papers to wrestle to <laughs> underneath the microphone. So we had columns that were, uh, we were discussing principles. Yeah, it was on the last page in chapter 14. So I just want to, I'm going to put up something here. Whoops, maybe I'm not. Maybe I'm not. I call him weaker brother and stronger brother. Yeah. Yes, okay. So, uh, weaker brother and stronger brother. Okay, so, so, um, go down the weaker brother column and talk to me about what you learned. Well, I, I, I put down a man is weak in the faith for two reasons. He has not yet discovered the meaning of Christian freedom. Mm -hmm. He is at heart still a legalist mm -hmm. and uses Christianity as a thing of rules and regulations. Mm -hmm. He has yet not liberated himself from the, a, beha a, a belief in the efficacy of works and his heart, he believes that he can gain God's favor by doing things and abstaining from others. That is excellent. Did you get that in a commentary? I uh, can't remember where I got it. Yeah, yeah, okay. No, that's excellent. That's excellent. So, so what was the, on the weak brother's side, what was the, the problem they were having with the conduct of the stronger? Um, in this particular incident, in this particular, yeah, context. Eating. What to eat and what not to eat. Mm -hmm. What do you acknowledge and mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay, so then let's move over to the strong brothers column and um um we talked about this last week, but go, let's let's talk about it some more. Um, Paul bids the stronger brother to welcome such a person and not besiege him with continual criticisms. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I kind of did it on a comparison type thing. So for the strong brother, I, I said he's strong in the faith, believes he may eat anything. He eats in honor of the Lord and gives thanks to God. Lives and dies to the Lord, will stand before the judgment seat of God, just like we all will and will give an account of himself to God. I kind of did it that way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Good. Overall, um, there, were, there, was, uh, there was 
kind of an attitude that was recommended <laughs> in the negative as far as the weaker brother is concerned. What was that? What did, what did Paul uh, observe that they might have been doing? The weaker or the stronger? The weaker. When Passing. they look, sorry. I missed that, sorry. Passing judgment? Yeah, passing judgment. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and so then how would the, how would the stronger, what was the proper attitude then? You said welcoming, but there's, there's something a little bit, what did he say about the strong brother? That their that their attitude should be, besides welcoming. Um, it should be humble. Should be able to eat anything. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, well, I guess the strong brother is the one that's uh, confident in his in his conscience, mm -hmm. um, persuaded. That what he thinks is is he's confident in what he believes in. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, I think that the maybe the weaker brother is confident in what they believe or what they yeah. practice. Uh -huh. So so, but there was some counsel given to the stronger brother, and you know I think it's exactly what my mother told was trying to teach me when I was the big sister of the family. You know when we were all growing up together. don't cause the other to stumble yeah just because you have a liberty don't make somebody else stumble in their faith because of it and there's something um there's a word that there's a word that's not used in this text but it's a word that came to my mind and that's forbearance okay mm -hmm. right because if you're stronger and somebody's saying oh oh Oh, oh, I can't do that. You just you, you practice forbearance. Doesn't do anything to your liberty, right? Yeah. right. You still have the liberty. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And and there was something very strong that that uh, Paul said um, in, in concerning. Um, these practices or practices of faith or whatever um it was a really strong warning i think that he gave about destroying the work of god how how they can destroy the work of god yes yeah by not behaving rightly with the weak brother yeah hey mom's here <laughs> Whose mom is it? <laughs> Hi, mom. <laughs> yeah, so yes. All right. So, um, okay. So, what we have been talking about what we uh, categorized in our lesson as the principle of liberty. And, and, um, and when we're looking in that column and we were examining that principle, um, what else did we find? What did we, what did uh, Paul remind us about the Lord? We should do everything we do in honor of him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and, oops, mom disappeared. <laughs> anyway, um, who who then um oh you know uh, uh, what i was thinking there was the the statement that was made about judging another man's servant oh. right mm -hmm. yeah. <clears throat> while we're all serving the lord christ and god our father we're while we're all serving god um we're judging another we're judging god's servants right right yeah. And uh, and uh, and you also said something about this earlier in terms of uh, judging what what is the um, 
what is the I'm not it's not an exhortation, but anyway, um, concerning judgment and each of us and God. We'll all stand before the judgment seat of God mm -hmm. and That's give an account and give an account on ourselves. Yeah, how we treated one another. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay, so we uh, we went on. And uh, we were looking at the principle of love. So we've already talked a little bit about this. But this is it, Romans 14, verses 13 to 23. Yeah. What do we see there? Mm -hmm. Don't pass judgment. Mm hmm yeah. Never put a stumbling block or a hindrance in the way of a brother. That's right. Uh, if your brother is grieved by what you eat, you are no longer walking in love. That, yes, there, there's that, eh? Uh, mm -hmm. On the other, on the other, yeah. And, uh, What about uh, um, giving a perception that something is good is actually evil, or how did that go? Don't let, don't. How's don't that go? Speak evil of what is good. Yes, yes. Don't let good or your liberty be called evil. And there's something we're supposed to pursue. Righteousness and in the Holy Ghost. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. And the building up of each other, right? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Very good. So let's look at Romans 15 now. <clears throat> How does this chapter continue in that subject of weak and strong brothers? And I wanted to ask, were strong brothers really mentioned <clears throat> in 14? I don't think so. They were referred to. They were referred to, yeah. Reference to, but not directly. Hey, Liz. Are you coming in? <laughs> okay. <clears throat> okay. So how so how does Romans 15 continue the subject of weak and strong brothers then? Telling what the strong are supposed to do. Mm -hmm. Not to please themselves. But... Mm -hmm. Have an obligation to bear with the failings of the weak. Mm -hmm. There's that fight. Hey, there she is. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I just had to undo a whole bunch of stuff here. <laughs> oh. <laughs> on your computer you mean or yeah 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 <laughs> okay so we're uh, have you had your audio on so you could hear where we are in the yes. session okay yes. good good so um i remember being weak in f in uh, in my faith walk and um observing people who had liberty but i i don't think I, that i don't think that it caused me to judge them it just kind of alarmed me a bit and i i can't remember what but it was distinctly in halifax that i remember this the people oh 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 i remember that i was horrified that people could could uh get together and go to the pub and have a beer <laughs> because and the reason for that was because uh, I was very close to just having been got out of the life of being a musician on the road playing in bars 
and uh, the contrast was too shocking to me. <laughs> now, um, I'm I'm the person I'm a personality type that you know it's kind of laissez-faire, right? Unless unless it's black and white. But it just kind of alarmed me because I didn't have that liberty. I still don't have that liberty. So there you go. Yeah. <clears throat> and uh, and uh, don't you think that there are some things that people just don't have in the spirit, don't have the same liberty as others? Because like, for example, you know, like somebody could be a recovering alcoholic or right. right? Yeah. yeah. All of those all of those kind of things. Yeah, see things happening there that maybe if you're a weak, you could get involved in yourself. Without yeah, it. get carried up, carried off, get carried away. Well, and you know what? When I wasn't uh, living a Christian life, I certainly did get carried away. <laughs> we've all been carried I away in all, some way. Yeah, I, I think, think we've all been there. <laughs> <laughs> I was just going to say, we used to have, the church was right across the street from the pub. Oh, <laughs> that I was brought up in. Yeah, and the, and the minister would go across there occasionally around noon and have a beer before his lunch. Yeah, mm -hmm. there you go. Yeah, witnessing to the parishioners. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and we were we we belonged to a church at one time where uh, we always had prayer meeting on a Saturday night. And uh, so we would have somebody from another another denomination, if you like, come in to join us on the Saturday night for prayer. Before they went out to the pubs to to witness to minister. Yeah, it was a pair of them that did it every Saturday night. But they came in to have prayer, prayer first, prayer. so that they you know they felt that. Yeah, yeah. Protection. Yes. Yes, covering, have a covering when you're going into the den of iniquity, right? <laughs> the Salvation Army go where the rubber hits, hits the road. And yep. I, I admire them for that. Mm -hmm. um, there was also, we were talking about special days that were observed and, and people were hung up on that and that others did not observe the same observances it's it's been very interesting for me um in my sphere of influence to be uh hanging about with seventh day adventists who are insistent upon uh, meeting on saturdays now i don't know about their doctrine i don't know anything about that but this is spoken of here is this the 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 meeting on certain days or making certain things that are, well i know when the church that i grew up in boy if you weren't at sunday morning sunday evening and wednesday prayer and thursday choir you just weren't holy <laughs> well at least that was the impression i had as a young person that's not really necessarily true <laughs> Okay, so here we are. We're in chapter 15. So what is the example that we have? When when we are thinking how to conduct ourselves in a given situation. Exactly. What, okay, okay. So now what what do we know about that? Um, well, you, you, you do what you do to the best of your ability. From a place of from a place of love and respect of the of the other of the other person, either a strong or a weak brother. Mm -hmm. and, with one another as best we can. And so, um, Christ's example that's there for us. He did not please himself. No. Didn't live selfishly at all. Yeah. Mm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so <clears throat> uh, if we are looking in verses one through 
13 of Romans 15, what is uh, Christ's example then? What do we see? He was a servant. He, he was a servant. Mm -hmm. And it says here he was a servant to the circumcised to show God's truthfulness and in order to confirm the promises given to the patriarchs. Mm -hmm. the Gentiles might glorify God for his mercy. That that was the, like that kind of I thought about that for a little while today. He came to his own so that so that so that the Gentiles yeah. would be welcome. Very interesting. Um, what what about there's a there's a word that we were talking about today and when we I, it's amazing to me how the studies that we're doing in the Psalms are lining up with our discussions in Romans and vice versa. It's amazing to me because we had a new word in the Psalm that we added to our um, to our uh, 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 what do you call that our bookmarks you know for for a, a word and it's one of the words that's here in in that Jesus's example he took upon himself the reproach of others mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so there's a prayer verses five to six Mm -hmm. yeah. And which is? May the, may the God of endurance and encouragement grant you to live in such harmony with one another in accord with Christ Jesus. And together you may with one voice glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Hmm. Do you find that this whole thing is getting stretched in the time that we're living in? <laughs> Oh, we've talked about that. Oh, yeah. This is so, this is so relative to not just the time we're living in, but the time that we're living in as a family. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Very much so. It's, it's been excellent for, you know, for, um, it's been good advice, right? <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. As far as how to handle situations. certain situations, you know, that that the importance of maintaining relationship as much as we can to the best of our ability. As far as it depends on you, right? Yeah. yeah. And not not worrying about the things that are indifferent. The things that we that are important, the things of our faith that are important, we there's no argument about. Mm -hmm. We know where, you know we, we all know where we stand in that. Mm -hmm. But for the things that are indifferent, and, and with I'm talking about COVID and the different things that are going on around that, mm -hmm. the vaccinated and the unvaccinated, that kind of thing is what mm -hmm. I'm saying. Um, and. Uh, so just to just being aware of what really matters and what what's indifferent and what isn't what what yeah. matters what yeah isn't. what's essential and what's not essential yeah indeed 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 so we, we uh, okay so we have a therefore in this uh, passage of fifteen and what's the therefore therefore. To see what was there before. <laughs> <laughs> he's quoting Second Samuel. Okay, he's quoting Second Samuel. Did you? Yeah. Are you talking about verse seven? Well, let me just uh, look up my book in here. So I've got to open nine. up my text. My oh, there's another. I got so many papers, and if we rustle them too much in front of. <laughs> microphone where that's all you hear okay yeah okay i was looking at verse nine okay yeah you so you were looking yes okay mm -hmm. we we were just looking at yeah, um yeah with one voice we we're talking about five and six and then there's a therefore in verse seven is that what you just said liz yeah 
Okay, sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> well, therefore, accept one another, just as Christ also accepted us to the glory of God. Mm, mm. Do you know, that relates to me back a uh, lesson that, that I was taught uh, uh, on the subject of forgiveness. And that we get we get all fired up and wounded and whatever mad whatever at each other for maybe it's a difference of opinion maybe it's sin who knows um and so that's a grinding between two human beings but when you're talking about sin all sin is against a holy god and so then the commandment to forgive as christ forgave us has to do with that because um, because we are we're each accountable to God, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And it's that same idea of um, the right comparison. The right comparison is God's standard. It's Christ, and and when it comes to welcoming or whatever. Um, accepting or bearing with it has to do with the example of Christ not with human beings you know because we're all flawed and we we still we you know we oh wretched man that I am who will deliver me from this body of death right okay and we already talked about um, uh, you mentioned this that uh, Jesus came to be a servant to the Jews because of the promises to the patriarchs right to the fathers yeah. and uh, there's a little Awana verse that uh, that uh, I memorized um, that had to do with the the things that were written in the past were written for our encouragement right mm -hmm. instruction mm -hmm. and instruction yeah and we find out something uh, about God in that segment there. He has mercy. Mm -hmm. Because he had mercy on Gentiles before there was even Jews. Mm -hmm. Yes, Abraham, right? Abraham, Isaac. Noah. <laughs> right. Yes, exactly. Exactly. It was only Jacob's children when they became Jews. Yes. Okay, so now um, I guess the point is, is that, you know, Christ welcomed us, but God welcomed Gentiles um, and, and um, that they have been on God's heart. Like, and we see the evidences of that through all the uh, Old Testament uh, cross references just as it, it was written and again Isaiah says and all of those things right rejoice O Gentiles with his people praise the Lord all you Gentiles that's kind of been tying in with what we're learning in the psalm as well we're in that really I can't remember which one it is but it was just it was a really depressed deep depressed many waters and how God hears us in those situations. And he had us Gentiles in his mind. Yeah. Okay, so verse 13 then, did we talk about that? No. Okay, verse, verse 13 then, what is that? It's a benediction. Yeah. It's a prayer of benediction. Yes. May the That's... God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that that power of the Holy Spirit may abound in home mm -hmm. so that is a, so sometimes when you're sometimes when you're at a loss for how do i pray in this situation or how do i or that's a really you you can just go right there just go right there may the god of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that by the power of the holy spirit you may abound in hope and of all people who who uh, have hope that sh we should be doing that abounding in that and sharing that okay how does the passage in ephesians 2 that we looked at how does that relate
Woher? Yes, exactly. So that Ephesian pa passage says what we were once formerly and what were we formerly? Sinners. As, as Gentiles, what were we? Separated from God. Yeah. That's right. We weren't the chosen nation. And we were, what about, what about our relationship to God's promises and covenants? We were outside of them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Strangers. Mm -hmm. And now, what happened because of Christ's blood? We were grafted in. And we were brought yeah, we were brought into service. We were brought near, right? We were we were once alien and strangers, and now we've been brought near. And as a result, Christ became Jehovah Shalom for us. Mm -hmm. And then, having done that, so Ephesians, when Paul says this to the Ephesians, he tells them that, He made both Jews and Gentiles into mm -hmm. one group. Mm -hmm. One new, yes, good. Mm -hmm. And as a result, now we have access to mm -hmm. we have access to Christ mm -hmm. in one spirit. So, uh, so access to God through Christ. Yes, yeah, yeah. Um, so in this, he, he, so then Paul reiterates the same message to the Romans as he did to the Ephesians, but with different language and different, um, Um, different emphases, let's just say that. But it was the same mm -hmm. message. Okay, so um, chart for ver for day five. Let's look at that. The chart on day five. Oh, yeah, there. Wrong page, Louis. So what do these things tell about Paul? What did we find out throughout here? Well, his character is uh, compassionate, loving, caring, welcoming, a servant, humble, gracious, and proud. God. Proud of his accomplishments or proud of what Christ has accomplished through him. Let's say that that's mm -hmm. more accurate. Yeah. He was blessed. Mm hmm. And he's ambitious. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And bold. Bold. He spoke boldly. Sorry. Mm -hmm. self facing he gives all the credit to Jesus. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Bold. Mm -hmm. Bold. Humble. Bold. Gracious and humble. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what was his ministry about, according to what we learned? Preaching the gospel. Mm -hmm. The work of God speaking Christ to them, both yeah. Jews and Gentiles, mm -hmm. specifically the Gentiles. Mm -hmm. He warned, he encouraged the building up of the body of believers. Mm -hmm. I like how it mentioned the priestly service of the 
gospel of God. Mm -hmm. Is there anything else mentioned in, in terms of his ministry that you can think of? Or that you wrote? Mostly teaching, yeah. Mm -hmm. I also saw Power of Signs and Wonders. That was that was uh, in that there. Okay, so uh, um, what what were his plans then? Did, as he outlined them, <laughs> he had a task to finish by taking uh, an offering to Jerusalem that was uh, provided by some of the other people mm -hmm. uh, he would when he was going to go to spain he would go to spain through rome so that he could mm -hmm. teach, do some teaching with the romans mm -hmm. he um it says he preached the gospel where it's never been preached he wanted to preach it where it's never been preached he didn't want to build on somebody else's work work mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <coughs> he wanted Good. to travel to Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. He wanted to be delivered from unbelievers. Ah, that was okay. So that was the column of his requests. So what was he requesting? His prayer requests. To be helped by those in Rome to complete his journey to Spain. Mm -hmm. Mm hmm. And what did you say there, Bobby? You said something. That they be delivered from the unbelievers in Judea. Mm hmm. Yeah. And the service in Jerusalem would be acceptable. Mm hmm. That he may <coughs> come to the believers in Rome with joy and be refreshed. Mm -hmm. in yeah, that's a yeah, that's. It wasn't just about what he could give, it was what he was hoping to get. Yeah. To be strengthened by them. Mm -hmm. Encouraged. And that the peace of God would be with them all. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, find rest in their company. Do you know what? Okay, we're just about at the end of what I wanted to talk about tonight. Hmm? Oh, we, did. we did that one already. Okay, so uh, what was the blessing then? What do you mean, what was the blessing? Well, there's a, he gave a blessing. What was the blessing? Oh. I thought it was the very last. The God of peace be with you all. Amen. Yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. And so how does that relate to the content of Romans 14 and Romans 15. Back to the unity issue and try not to, to be at war with anybody. Mm -hmm. Make peace and the God of peace will be with us all. Mm -hmm. Yes, mm -hmm. God of peace be with them. And the uh, acceptance that he's asking, they practice and they're welcoming. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, When we are, I was thinking this today that, you know, the church is a fantastic place. It's a, you know, I mean, the body of believers is, a fant I'm not talking about a church building or anything like that, but the body of believers is a fantastic place. And it's also a terrible place because it's full of hu humans <laughs> who are fallen and, you know, and we, and so doing this whole, um, getting 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 your biblical worldview burned deep i think that's that's the challenge isn't it yeah it is mm -hmm. yeah and so many so many things so many things i i really liked this so when we saw god in these chapters uh he was he was um 
he was spoken of three ways. that I saw in 15. And it's a God of endurance and encouragement mm -hmm. in verse 5. Mm -hmm. God the Father in verse 6. Mm -hmm. He shows mercy in verse 9. Mm -hmm. speaks of how God gives grace. Mm -hmm. And he's a God of hope. Mm -hmm. Verse 13. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's, it's, it says in 16 that the, that, uh, the gospel is God's gospel mm -hmm. as well as Christ's mm -hmm. the gospel because that's what Jesus came to, to give out was the gospel of God, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Always oh, the God of peace, the very end. Yes, the very end. So this is the God we serve. And uh, it, one thing that we, we know for sure that he in no wise will cast us out when we come to him. We know that he generously gives wisdom to everybody who asks for it. Yeah. And... Um, the Holy Spirit is at work in his people to convict of sin of righteousness and to bring to mind all the scriptures that we need to apply in any given situation. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, so I don't know. I'm just thinking maybe when I'm done here, I'm going to, you know, with this lesson tonight, I might just take a, a moment and um, make myself a little heart check. <laughs> you know, a card, a heart check. Check this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Check this, right? Check this. Um, I think it was really precious for me to, to know, to hear this reiterated, the God of endurance and encouragement in other words god's hanging there in the background say at a boy at a girl you can do it you can do it yeah and he, he loves us even when we fall yes <laughs> miserably <laughs> he will in no wise cast you out <sighs> yes and that's you know that's uh, that's the hope part too right we have hope in the now as well as for the future. Mm. Mm. Well, so any other wise and choice thoughts that anybody has? Any? Well, the only thing I really pulled out, and that was only because I did a cursive read of it all, um, the big thing that always strikes me is verse six. With one accord, you may with one voice glorify God, the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. It always comes back to glorifying God. And I don't know if that's a simplistic way to look at it, but I had written in my Bible, soul purpose. Mm. Our soul purpose, whatever we do. And I know Paul says it, right? Whatever we do, eat or drink, do it all to the glory of God. Mm -hmm. But he keeps saying it over and over and over. That's why we were created to bring glory to God. And I just find that such an, a, a big, huge, overarching, I guess it's a goal. Or maybe it's our mission because we are to preach the gospel, but again, to the glory of God. We are to live in unity to the glory of God. We are to love our brothers, love our neighbors to the glory of God, right? Everything is to be done to the glory of God. Mm. That's huge. Mm. Mm -hmm. it, <laughs> when you say that, it's interesting, though, because we're looking in this, in this particular passage of people who are more mature in faith than others. 
and how people have different ideas about what the glory of God looks like sometimes too, right? Mm -hmm. By definition, yeah. Yeah. And so guess I guess, you know, it's like it's the the quarreling bit, right? Well, when I think of glory of God, all I think of is that whenever anybody in the Bible sees an angel, only an angel, they already fall prostrate. Mm -hmm. So imagine when they meet or see the glory of God or like um, Moses, right? He couldn't even look in the glory of God. He had to hide in the cleft of a rock. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know. I just think it's going to be so overwhelming. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Indeed. And that's his glory. That's not himself. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. 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 His train fills the whole temple. Mm. Print train of Israel fills the whole temple. Mm -hmm. Well, I think we can go home early. <laughs> hey, because there's a lot, I mean, you know, there's, I don't know about you, but you know, there's so many situations in life that I have been thinking this through and wrestling this through all week. For weeks and weeks and weeks, I've been wrestling this through. How does that apply? How does how do you how how does this work get worked out? How in in as far as I'm concerned, in these particular circumstances of life, and um, you know, sometimes I just I just say, Lord, I I can't figure this out. So you're just going to have to show me, or you're going to have to show them, or and I'm just going to have to wait until you do. Yeah, there's a lot. Of, there's a lot about denying self here too, isn't there? Mm. In this, in this um, bid for unity, mm. I looked at the Matthew Henry commentary, and uh, the one thing that struck well, there were a few things that struck me, but the one little quote here was the unity of Christians. Speaking of glorifying Godless. The unity of Christians glorifies God as the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ because it's a kind of counterpart or representation of the oneness that is between the Father and the Son. Mm. And the Trinity, right? Mm -hmm. You take it one step further to the whole Trinity. Yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. But that's just to physics to cross the whole concept of um, if your brother sins or errs, right, you need to correct him, pull him in, do all of that. And there's a whole bunch of things that are all balancing each other out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's not all love, love, love either. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. I think we will be held accountable to extremely high standards. And I don't know the answer either because there are days that I might as well crawl under the rug as well. But, uh, yeah, well, I, I I don't know anymore. Like you just do your best every day, all the time, and ask for the Holy Spirit's guidance because He's been promised to be our helper, right? Mm -hmm. He's our guide, mm -hmm. our counselor. Mm -hmm. Indeed, indeed. Well, do you have anything else you'd like to add to this, Mister Ash? <laughs> Mister Ash. <laughs> I, I I called him Mr. Bob for so long in the Awana program then Mr. You know, it's just it's routine. <laughs> You're not the first person who's got a chuckle. Yeah, well all my little kids in in kids ministry call me Mr. Bob, so Yeah, Mr. Bob. Yeah. Well, uh then let's go to prayer. Oh, Father, we live in such perilous times right now. And some of us, well, each of us are weak in some ways and strong in other ways. And you see that, Lord, and we rub up against each other and, and uh, living harmoniously with one another, Lord, you know it's just not the easiest thing in the world. 
And we're just asking you, Lord, to keep our eyes focused upon you, the author and finish of our, finisher of our faith, yes. who went to, who did not come to serve, but to be the servant of all and to lay down his life as a sacrifice for, for us. And thank you, Lord, that you're gracious and merciful on us human beings who, although we do want to love you wholeheartedly, we're, we're very far from that at times, very far. And though we do want to live in harmony and love our brothers and sisters and even our enemies, we fall so far short sometimes, Lord. And we're counseled by that scripture in James about our tongues and, and, and all of this. And I just I ask you, Father, to continue the good work that you started in us. Thank you that we never need to stay defeated or depressed or condemned, but we can always come to you for your cleansing and we can rest in you, Jesus, our Jehovah Shalom, the Prince of Peace. We know that there's going to come a day when we will live in beautiful harmony with one another. And in that time, all friction and every tear will be wiped away from every eye. When we see you face to face and that we will be like you and we will know you as you are, not just the way we see through our physical imaginations and eyes. And so Lord, please accept our praise and our gratitude for grafting us into your kingdom, into your family. Keep our ears open and our hearts open to uh, other people, even if they get wounded. And uh, thank you that, yes, you're going to finish the word that you started in us. Yes. Mm -hmm. God, will you bless each of these dear hearts here in this study and all of those dear ones who may come across this study later on. Uh, this is a difficult uh, topic in a way to talk about because we still have so much. Uh, we confront so much our pridefulness. Mm -hmm. And we see it raising its uh, ugly head. And teach us, Lord, how that we can live in peace as far as it is uh, within our sphere to do that. And release us, Lord, from any condemnation which may come when, when there's nothing that we can do. Because it depends on someone else. Help us to... Just trust you with all of that and and help us to release um, some of these situations, these relationships to you for your hand, for your for your timing, your 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 work that you're doing amongst us. Yes. Thank you for never ever casting us out. Bless and keep us each one till we meet next time with our last lesson in the study. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. 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 Amen, you guys. So the penultimate, I had to use that word again. <laughs> my my $20 word. <laughs> our, our penultimate lesson is finished. And next week we're going to finish this book of Romans. Uh I don't have the thing up ahead of me to give you a little preview of what I might review, what, what I might not. <laughs>
But anyway, I'm going to say good night to the YouTube family out there. Thank you for dropping in. I hope this has been a blessing to you. And I hope that God speaks to your hearts like he's speaking to ours. And I'm just going to pause the recording.